hello guys in this video we're going to talk about the iron absorption iron is an essential element we need in our body to perform various metabolic processes we get our iron by eating foods daily diet requirement of iron is between 10 to 20 milligrams per day and it changes according to the age and sex so first we take iron by eating foods then it travels in elementary tract and when it arrives in his small intestine, it gets absorbed into enterocytes or the intestinal absorptive cells. Then the absorbed iron is transported to tissues either for utilization or for store. So this is the overall story of absorption of iron. Now let's try to describe it in details. There are two types of absorbable dietary iron, heme iron and non-heme iron. Heme is a complex containing Fe2 plus iron and a profyrene ring. So basically heme iron means Fe2 plus iron. So heme iron is derived from hemoglobin and myoglobin of animal food sources like meat, seafood, poultry, fish, etc. Non-heme iron means Fe3 plus iron. Basically found in uh, plant-based food like vegetable, fruits, nuts, seeds, etc. The absorption of most dietary ions occurs in the duodenum and the proximal jejunum. Let's go back to the small intestine here and zoom in. Here I am drawing intestinal cell known as enterocytes. Here there is the lumen of small intestine. So iron travels through the stomach and arrives in the lumen of small intestine. Heme ion absorption into the enterocyte by a separate heme transporter located in the apical surface of the enterocyte. Due to this separate heme transporter, the heme ion absorption is more efficient and more easy than non heme ion absorption. So, this surface of the enterocyte is the apical surface, this surface is the basolateral surface. Next to the basolateral surface, we can show the bloodstream. Once inside the cell, heme ion is broken to Fe2 plus by the enzyme heme oxygenase. Non heme ion absorption into enterocyte is performed by a proton coupled divalent metal transporter, also known as DMT1. As the name indicates, this protein molecule can transport only ions which have the valency 2. So the ferric ions have to be reduced to ferrous ions. Uh, this action is performed by the enzyme ferriroductase present on the apical surface of the enterocyte. Then the ferrous ions travels through the DMT1 into enterocyte. Once inside an enterocyte, Fe2 plus is converted to Fe3 plus ion. Then it binds to intracellular carrier molecule which helps to transport it inside the cell. Depending on the iron state of the body, ICM Fe3 plus complex delivers iron to mitochondria for its functions. Apoferritin 4 stores as ferritin. Apotransferrin 4 transport across the body. Inside the mitochondria, iron is used for several functions like heme synthesis, and heme is an important prosthetic group for proteins involved in cellular respiration. Ferric can binds with apoferritin molecule to form ferritin, which is the main storage form of iron inside the cell. When there is a reduced iron state inside the cell, ferritin can release iron. Absorbed Fe2 plus iron transferred across the basolateral membrane into the bloodstream via another transporter called ferroprotein or iron regulatory transporter 1. This protein may interact with the copper containing protein hepastin. It helps the action of ferroprotein. And it is a protein similar to another protein called seroplasmin. It is important to know. Hepastin have a ferroxidase activity which is important in the conversion of Fe2 plus to Fe3 plus again. As Fe3 plus cannot transport around the body itself, there is a need of a transporter molecule which is known as apotransferrin. 
two ferric ions bind to one apo transferrin molecule to form transferrin finally transferrin molecule transport iron to target storage like liver and bone marrow via blood stream this is my first video on iron metabolism in the second video we will be discussing how the iron is stored and regulation of iron level in the body subscribe to my channel and stay tuned thank you